on to alkenes and alkynes. So we did all the naming for alkanes, molecules that only have single bonds. Now we're going to talk about double bonds. So alkenes. Remember, these are called unsaturated hydrocarbons because they have a, at least one double bond in there. That means that they don't have as many hydrogens as possible. We took off two hydrogens to make that double bond instead. Okay. So these are, you cannot rotate around a double bond. It is a rigid structure. I've said this a couple of times now. You cannot rotate around that. And these end up being planar. Okay. If you look at your hybridization or if you look at your Vesper structure, however you want to think about it, these carbons have one, two, three groups on them. So each of these are trigonal planar. So it's really a flat molecule. This one in particular would have two hydrogens going up and two going down. Okay. Flat two up, two down, all 120 degree angles, okay? This has a sigma bond and a pi bond. That's that extra sharing of electrons. A normal one that has only single bonds can rotate. This bond right here, it can turn right or left. Double bond, because of the way that they are set up, cannot rotate. So it is a very rigid structure. Okay? So we have to indicate if one, if they have different groups, if there's scissor trans in there. So naming rules are very simple. First of all, find the longest chain. You need the longest chain of carbon. It does have to include the double bond. You have to have the double bond in your long chain for an alkene. The suffix is going to be ene instead of a. And you're going to start numbering your carbons instead of the lowest numbers on the substituents, the closest to the double bond. So wherever your double bond is, start numbering closest to the double bond. Um, if it's the same on both sides, then you just want to pick the side that has the most substituents. Um, for a cycloalkene, the double bond is between your carbons one and two. Okay, so um, all the other rules apply. You want to have low numbers on substituents, so on and so forth. Um, if you have a geometric isomer, meaning you have two different groups on the different sides of a double bond, it is either cis or trans, same side or different side. So anytime you have a double bond, you have to look for this. Now, if they're all hydrogens, there is no cis or trans. It doesn't matter <clears throat> because there's not two isomers. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, if you have two different groups on there, you have a cis or a trans version. You have the hydrogens on the same side or the hydrogens on different sides. Or you can think of it as the groups on the same side or different sides. And you have to put that that prefix cis or trans in front of the name, very front, okay, before you do all your substituents. Okay, so these are important if you have a double bond with different groups. All right, so name each of the following alkenes, including any cis or trans designation. So if it is cis or trans, you have to say that. So if I'm looking at this molecule, this first one here, all right, my carbon's longest chain, I have one, two, three, four. I do have to include that double bond. Now I want to start numbering on the side that is closest to the double bond. So this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three, this is carbon four. Okay, so my end is going to be butene. Four carbons with the double bond is E. Now I do have to also tell you where that double bond is. If my, my double bond is between carbons one and carbons two, then it is just called, we just list the lowest one, so it's one. So this is called one butene, okay? This thing right here, one butene. I do have a substituent. I have a methyl group on carbon two. So this is two methyl, one butene. Two methyl, one tells me where the double bond is, butene. Now, why did I not say cis or trans here? Because both of the groups are on the same carbon. I, I can't really have a cis or trans because these are both hydrogens. Uh, so you have to have groups on both of the carbons. Uh, so if we look at this one over here, this one does have a cis or trans designation. So I started counting one, two, three, four, five, six. That's, I have six carbons in a row. Okay. I start numbering over here because it's closest to where my double bond is. So my double bond is between carbons two and three. So I call this two hexene. Now, if I look at the double bond, my hydrogens are on opposite sides. So I throw a trans in front of it. So this is trans two hexene. Now, I got some cyclos, and remember, if you have cyclos, the double bond has to be between carbons one and two. So this, I kind of, kind of, this is one and this is two. Honestly, if you did it, this is one and this is two, you would get the same answer. So this is cyclohexene. Now, you don't have to tell me where the double bond is because it is always between one and two. So cyclohexene is just fine. You do not put one in front of it. You only do that for the long chain. Okay, so this is cyclohexene. I've got a methyl and carbon three and five, so it's three, five dimethylcyclohexene. 
Over here, I started counting this way because that gives me the low substituent. So again, I assume my carbon double bond is between one and two. So I just say cyclopentene and I have a methyl on three. So three methyl cyclopentene.